Greetings all. Well, unrest in the Middle East again and gas prices just going through the roof. Everything's increasing again. It's, uh, you know, bad enough that <laughs> there's Russia and Ukraine now. We get Hamas and the Israelis over there and, well, I keep, I keep pounding on folks gasoline's too volatile get away from it because every time something happens on the globe it doesn't matter what it is uh, they'll come up with another reason to raise fuel prices uh, prices on regular in Los Angeles are now over six dollars a gallon uh, I believe it's over six dollars a gallon across uh, pretty much the entire state of California at this point Hawaii well we're uh, getting very close to five dollars a gallon over here for uh, for fuel and it it will be going up shortly it gets pretty expensive and then you've got to add that cost onto everything else you're doing because everything moves on gasoline diesel jet fuel it's all the same so i'm back here again pounding on that stump about get away from the gas cars folks get yourself an ev the time is now um it's amazing when you're free from all of this craziness in in the fuel prices uh, yeah i i just had uh, a good friend of mine uh greg McAllister was over here this morning and he filled me in on something i didn't know uh, case tractors uh, making the 75c uh, it, it's a farm all it's an EV tractor yeah I, they figure it's got about oh a good four hours run out in the field anyway on the battery they're putting into it yeah uh, and uh, it's powerful thing it's a it's a really good powerful tractor i believe this thing's being made in cahoots with one of the korean tractor manufacturers probably lg um, although i'm not positive which one of them there's a few uh, but yeah this is this is kind of a joint project thing but i was surprised to find case the great american tractor manufacturer is number one uh, they have an electric backhoe out there too now uh, but this is an all-purpose tractor. Uh, use it on the farm, use it to pull around stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's a sign of the times. It's coming. Yeah, it, it's gonna be slow, a little irregular. And of course, there will be all sorts of complaints and protests about any sort of a change. Um, moving away from petroleum to running our equipment on on electricity is a major improvement yeah. moving away from petroleum is a major improvement uh, for both our economy and our society it's a definite improvement in the environment uh, co2 is a problem uh, yeah so it, it you will find if you make this conversion your vehicles are quieter they don't smell the maintenance level is so much lower yes my last gas car is having a starter motor problem at the moment my EV doesn't use a starter motor <laughs> the whole darn car is the starter motor <laughs> yeah uh, maintenance level is much higher on, on the gas powered stuff whether it be your chainsaw or your tractor or whatever it is um, yeah, it's good for the environment. It's good for your pocketbook uh, in more ways than one. Like I say, you're not going to be uh, doing oil changes. You're not going to be doing the heavy maintenance. There are not nearly as many moving parts in these EV vehicles. You haven't got as much to break down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I talk about all these advantages. And, of course, there are people who say, oh, no, there's not enough chargers. Oh, no, we're going to run it all on nuclear energy. And, well, my suggestion to anybody who gets an EV track, or an EV car truck buy the charger too <laughs> okay and uh, you know hook it up so that it's running off of solar energy man you, if you run yourself an EV off of solar energy I mean there's no way a guy could ever feel 
that smart, okay? <clears throat> Aside from the fact that it's good for the planet, it's good for your children. For the next seven generations, it's the right thing to be doing. Um, you know, my, if I had any grandchildren with the mess we've made out of this planet, I think they'd have a good right to put me up against a wall and offer me a last cigarette with a blindfold for the way we've treated the earth. Uh, and we had choices. We could have made better choices. So beyond that, I've been sitting around here, I said, complaining that my last gasoline vehicle is a starter motor problem. It's going to need repair. Um, I will repair it and pretty soon either give it away or attempt to sell it uh, before the things aren't worth anything anymore. But uh, the uh, Alpha Wolf, Man, the Alpha Wolf, it's an EV pickup being made in Southern California. Uh, like, the, like the Tesla, uh, you know, Cybertruck, it's one of these things where you're going to get on a list, but eventually this thing will be produced in large numbers. I'm hot on it. I, I was ready for, to buy a Ford uh, when they come up with an EV, but Ford hasn't gone in the right direction for me. I, I like small trucks uh, for my applications here now at my stage in life I don't need a three-quarter ton heavy-duty pickup with a full you know size box on it the, uh, the size of pickups that they used to make in Japan the old Datsuns the old Toyotas uh, the uh, uh, the Mazdas the uh, Ford Ranger was a Mazda body for instance and so that's size well that's approximately what the Alpha Wolf is it's a, it's a small sized EV pickup and you can even get these son of a guns in four all wheel drive okay uh, uh, they're rugged they're they're cool man they really are um, they're exactly what I've been looking for personally this is this is the thing I cannot wait till people get off the reservation lifts and they start to make them. I'm going to put links both to the case tractor and to uh, this Alpha Wolf truck that I'm just sold on um, in the text below this video so you all can go have a look at it. Um, you know, I, I'm not posting this out here so I can hear your sob stories about how EVs are not any good, how it's going to use lithium, how they're worse for the environment, etc., etc., etc. That's a load of crap. Um, they're a definite good stepping stone away from where we have been. They are not the perfect answer but they're the transitional one and every day I'm opening up an article and finding out somebody else is working on some brand new battery and some brand new way to charge a battery um, that's making the batteries perhaps greener making them last longer and making them hold a charge better so that it's it's more feasible according to the Department of Transportation <laughs> okay well government ain't always right but according to them they calculate that the average American drives 37 miles a day. Now, of course, you know, there's somebody out there that says, no, man, I drive 200 miles a day to get to work and back. You know, okay, sure there are. This is an average figure. But if you take the average figure and look at it, it means there's a whole lot of us like me that drive less than 37 miles a day. Um, Ellen drives more than 37 miles a day. And so there's a household where we're kind of split. But... 37 miles a day on an average indicates that almost everybody in the United States of America could be making good use out of an EV at this moment. <laughs> because mine will run out for, you know, nearly 300 miles between charges. Now, I have the charger here at the house. Um, Hilo uh, to the cross streets is 15 miles down the road from my house. Hilo is where we will go if we're looking for things shopping in the store buying a pipe fitting you know that's where we get most of it and so i have you know maybe a 40 to 50 mile round trip by the time i'm done driving around town and getting back up here to the house and so we're pretty close on that average number uh living right here in, in this area i would say that most americans do not have to make such a long trip to find materials we live in a rural area where we got to drive find a city where we can get stuff okay well like i say average 37 miles a day eh, ain't no excuse my goodness anybody could drive an ev at those distances so 
it's looking like the numbers are stacked against you there are the you know, naysayers who, who uh, think that this is bad news switching to EVs as the price for gas is continuing to go up it ain't going to be coming down anytime soon don't expect that yeah and so it's going to tear into everything and it's affecting me too i could convert everything in this house to lithium and run it off the sun and i'm still going to get screwed with the rest of you because of gasoline yeah diesel fuel moves every piece of food in the country gasoline and diesel plow the farm fields the jets are all run on aviation fuel etc etc all made from petroleum the further and faster we get away from that it's a toxic formula um, surviving on carbon-based petroleum fuels that are scarce and only located in some places so some people got them other people's don't and the people's that don't have them is going to pay the price from the people that do have them but as far as electricity is concerned, you can use electricity, make electricity from so many different things. Anything that will make something spin. <laughs> yeah. If you can make it spin, you can make electricity on this planet. And so, uh, you know, windmills, water wheels, you know, or it doesn't even have to spin if it's a photovoltaic panel, you know. There's so many ways you can produce electricity. Um, and it's not locked in like fossil fuel is. Where if you're using fossil fuel in a car, you got no choice. You're going to use fossil fuel. The only other alternative, I guess, is you could grow corn, make your own alcohol, and burn whiskey in the tank and with a few modifications, you know, which isn't, well, it's cleaner as far as the emissions that come from it. Uh, alcohol is pretty much you know water vapor and some co2 but the the cost of production there is the problem that corn is not a cheap thing to produce it takes enormous amounts of petroleum uh, in both uh, synthetic fertilizers and in fuel to to move it plow it and so on uh, lots and lots of chemicals ordinarily used in the production of corn and so basically make it corn out of alcohol that's not our solution either uh, that was the bush administration yeah they liked it because you know being oilmen it would go through the same nozzle yeah no people down there in texas who were in the oil business they, they could just as easily go into the alcohol business and that's why it appealed is one of the the only other green things <laughs> that George Bush Jr., the W, ever did uh, while he was in office, there was just one other, and it was that meeting with Cousteau. Uh, he had dinner at the White House, and, and um, Cousteau convinced him to set aside the, the far-flung Hawaiian island chain, we're talking, I don't know, like 1,500 miles or so of marine preserve extending out beyond Kauai here. It will be the largest marine preserve on the planet. I believe it has been added to since uh, a few times. Uh, it's paying off because it's creating breeding populations of fish out there uh, that are keeping our supplies here in the islands fishable. And so it's been a very good thing. I think the only reason old Bush did that and agreed uh, when Cousteau asked him if he would is because Bush hates fish. He don't like eating fish at all. <laughs> he said, oh, why do I care about fish? <laughs> sure, let's make a monument. I hate fish. <laughs> Pretty much, I think, the way the story went. Although it's no proof on that that's that's my imagination i just happen to know he does not eat fish <laughs> no. oh well that was the good old days you know i was back when we had republicans we could make fun of yes. anyway <laughs> y'all hang loose uh you know see what you can do about getting away from filling up your tractor and filling up your car with that uh gasoline stuff go EV 